Okay, everyone, welcome to this fourth lesson, lesson in Hebrew 102. And so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to be going over the whole of the first day, okay? Basically, this is the first day of the recreation of God making th everything new again and making everything new. Um, and then we're going to look and we're, we're going to talk about, we're going to go through all of our words, we're going to talk about all of our words. This is the simplest Hebrew in the Bible, basically. So... There's nothing real complicated here. Maybe one word uh, is complicated in terms of its uh, in, in terms of its uh, a verb stem a form, and um, then as far as parsing the verbs, it's really easy. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the perfect form of the verb and the imperfect form of the verb, just a little bit, just real briefly. Um, and so I wanted to introduce. Verse 5 here tonight, uh, just to um, make the first day complete. And so I'm going to read it to you. It's uh, And I'm going to go real slow because remember, what you're always doing here in Hebrew is the first thing you're always doing is you're doing a transliteration. And of course, I did that for you almost every time, right? Um, and the... And, in the first in, in Hebrew 101 and then the first part of Hebrew 102 and so now that's something that you're going to start doing on your own I'm just going to I'm going to articulate it for you just so that you maybe are helped in that so it's Vayekra Elohim Laor Yom Velachoshech Kara Laila Vayehi Ere Vayehi Boker Yom Echad. You say, so um, let's just look real quickly here. We'll pick out the verbs. And here we have kara, which is to proclaim or call. And um, then, of course, with that, we have uh, the, um, uh, this is, uh, you, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about this a little bit later. You see the yod, it makes it an imperfect, okay? But when as soon as we put the Vav on there, it's a Vav, it con converts it, it's called a Vav conversive. Once again, don't forget that term. A Vav conversive. Okay? It changes uh, the the tense. And so it's now and he called because and I'll just go ahead and show you once again uh, over here on this paradigm chart. I haven't gone through it yet, but um, just to kind of make note of it, because uh, I'm going to use the same to be um, uh, verb uh, as I did with the perfect chart, so that you can hopefully it's not going to be confusing to you. A lot of the time, when you see a yod at the beginning of a three letter, uh, a three consonant um, uh, uh, word, it's going to be, it's making it imperfect. And it's always going to start off with the third masculine singular. I guess that's a, a uniqueness too about Hebrew. It's like I think in English and most languages you start off with the first person and you work your way second person, third person, right? Mm -hmm. But Hebrew is always starts with the third person masculine singular. That's its simplest stem, as I had said previously. So just look real quickly here, just for just a moment, um, in the in the perfect. Uh, it's the third masculine singular is just the simple form of the verb and we it's the simple form of the cow what we call the cow stem of the verb okay remember there's seven different uh, stem, seven seven different verb forms um, and we're not getting into those seven different verb forms that modifies this a little bit uh, but bottom line in the simple verb form which is the cow verb uh, uh, verb form. Uh, you see the three letter uh, root or the three letter consonant stem. And then in the same way with the imperfect, the only difference is that you have the yod added to it. And of course, you know, when you add the yod to it, it's going to change the sound of this word. And so that's reflected then in the vowels. And there is actually a system to these vowels too which is which are which you can learn over time we're not going to get into it right now but probably the most important thing in recognizing it 
would be the yod with a with a herrick underneath it. See that? The herrick. When you see a yod at the beginning of a word with a herrick under it, you know that it's a it's an imperfect form. Third person masculine singular. Um, I I I don't know, but that there's there's always exceptions to rules. Okay? There's always an exception. But that's the majority of what you're going to see. And then when you look over here and you say, put it to the test. Okay? You see, in most cases, you see that right under the yod. And especially in this case, there, you, there it is. You see the herrick. Okay? So, and, and uh, so it's by, uh, by Yekra. Okay? By Yekra. And he called. Okay? And who called? God. Elohim. And God called Laor. To the or what is or light, okay? Or he called the light towards the light. He said to the light or the air the, that this dimension of the light. He called it day, okay? And belachoshech, which belachoshech, which is night, he called to the or for darkness to the darkness. He called it lila, which is night. Night. So there we got, uh, once again, we've got our, our, our opposites, okay? We've got the day, uh, we've got the light, the darkness, we've got the day, and we've got the night. So let's build our vocabulary that way and just, just try to use it. Just, you, know, just, you know, there's so many different ways that you can utilize that, you know, just say um, one of them is, um, well, I, I don't want to confuse you right now, so I won't get into it. Uh, but down here, we see something that's really easy to do. Like you can see, because you've got now, you've got Erev for the evening, and you've got Boker, and you already know Tov, right? Because good, you've learned Tov. How many times have you heard Tov now? My goodness. And Tov actually is an adjective, right? But it's not in the Hebrew here. It's in a verb form. And it's in the Cal perfect form right here. And actually, all the way through here. It's in the Cal perfect form right here in the verse 4. It's Cal perfect form uses an adjective. Tov right there. Kitov. And you've heard Kitov over and again. So you've got a couple words here that you could constantly use. Boker, Boker, Tov. Good morning. Boker, Tov. Okay, Boker, Tov. Okay, got that? You, those are two words in your vocabulary. And you want to say good evening? Boker, Ere. Simple, right? So, um, so here we go. Vayekra Elohim leor yom le velachoshek kara laila vayahi ere vayivi voker yom echad. So let me go a little bit faster. Vayekra Elohim leor yom velachoshek kara laila vayahi ere vayivi voker yom echad. Okay. And the evening and the morning was the first day. So you got So day one is. Uh, to say day one, our first day, it's Yom Achad. And so we say um, Sunday. Hebrew said, God said Yom Achad. Our first day, day one. Okay? And um, so what I want to do here is just kind of want to back up. I want to read this for you one more time. And, I, and I hopefully you are practicing in the same way. And then let's just go back and review these words one more time. Make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, people are always asking me things like, did you give a homework assignment during that lecture? Yes. All through the lecture. You're going to continue to do the same thing that you've always done, that we've always had you to do. And that is that you've got to do transliteration of it. That's number one. And then you've got to do a translation of it. So we went from uh, from just doing transliteration to now also including translation. So every time you're going to do transliteration and you're going to do translation, okay? And you are going to be practicing pronouncing these things because it may be that it may be that your final is going to be that you've got to recite this to me. Not recite it, but at least read it. Okay, so you need to be practicing. I can see some of you gulping right now. Some of you basically are, are just gasping. No, I may give you just one or two verses. You won't have to do the whole chapter, um, you know, but 
you should be able to do this. This isn't that hard. You should be able this quarter to be able to go. Better sheet bara Elohim et hashemayim ve et haaretz ve haaretz hayata tohu vabohu ve choshech al pani toho ve ruach Elohim merachefet al pani hamayim. Let me just say um, on merachefet real quick. Uh, the the verb stem here is rachaf resh het fe and the um, the mim refers to a peel. I said nifel. I don't know why I did that. Um, I guess you know I was thinking of some kind of conversion of the nun, but I'm not going to get into that. And then the te <coughs> at the end of the word makes it feminine, okay? And I'm not going to get into all the details of it, but I just I had happened to mention that this uh, verb form last time. And this is the only departure that we have from the simple uh, simple cow verb form, perfect and imperfect, um, in this first day. Well, the ancient past and the first day. Because the ancient past, Bereshit bara Elohim. Tell me, when was God's beginning? Okay? He who has no beginning has a beginning. Okay? Uh, he has not a be he does personally don't have a beginning, but his creation has a beginning. So he who has no beginning started creating at some time in the beginning. And so that is okay, so that's ancient. I mean come on, that's ancient. Please. Please that is ancient. Give me a break, okay? Better sheet Elohim in the beginning God created. You should have that. Better sheet Elohim. You can walk around, look at people and go, Better sheet Elohim. <laughs> Okay, Bereshit bara Elohim. Okay, I'm being a little bit lazy tonight. Just got off of a road trip. Bereshit bara Elohim. I cannot bring my southern slang into my Hebrew pronunciation. Otherwise, it gets it goes way off. I can butcher the English with a southern slang. And all you southerners, <laughs> I know you appreciate me because I'm one of you. And all you northerners, I know that you appreciate me because I'm one of you too, even though I don't sound like you. But here we go. <laughs> Bereshit bara Elohim et hashemayim ve et haaretz ve haaretz hayata tohu vabohu ve choshech al pane tohom ve ruach Elohim merachefet al pane hamayim ve yomer Elohim yahior ve yahior ve yar Elohim et haor kito ve yabdel Elohim bin haor bin hachoshech. Vayekra Elohim la or yom. I should say it with a little bit more rhythm here. Vayekra Elohim la or yom. Vayekra Elohim la or yom. Belachoshek kara laila. Vayehi ere, vayehi voker, yom echad. So, try to get that, try to get that fluent. Or close to that fluent, and it's okay. Remember, break things down into two, into a simple syllables, consonant vowel, va ye ra, va ye ra. Somebody said, "Well, that just isn't two. That isn't just a, a consonant and a vowel." Well, you know now because the schwa is under there. That is an op. That's the. Um, is that the open syllable or the closed syllable? When you have a swab in, huh? If you if you don't end in a vowel, if you don't end in a vowel, is it an open syllable or a closed syllable? If you end in a consonant, it's a closed syllable. Right. So that's a closed syllable. Right. It's a closed syllable because the schwa here is a silent schwa. Mm -hmm. So it's va ye, right? Not va ye ka, son. You see that? Mm -hmm. It's not va ye ka, right? It's not va ye ka. It's va. You see that? Va ya. Va ye. Forgive me. Va ye. So it's, you pronounce the yod, the herek, and the kof, right? Va ye. Va ye. So breaking it down into the syllables, first syllable is va. Say va. Va. The second syllable is ye. Because it's yod with a dogish in there, right? And it's the dogish that doubles, right? Uh, a yod, 
a herek and a kof, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yek, va yek. So there's our two syllables, va yek ra, and the aleph is silent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Va yek ra. So you just do it that way. Do your trans transliteration, and then in your pronunciation. So we're doing. Let us. Let me make sure that I'm very very clear. I want you doing three things every time. Mm -hmm. I want you to do your transliteration, your pronunciation, and your translation. It's okay that you don't know what you're saying. Most of the stuff you say, anybody knows what you're saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that is for most all of us, including me. But at any rate, okay, you want to do your transliteration, your pronunciation, and then your translation. And then when you do this, you want to try to gain some speed with it. You know, I'm not giving you a bunch of vocabulary words. I'm not telling you, okay, now here is a cow, uh, a, a simple cow stem. Now I want you to go through every, uh, you know, paradigm of the cow stem for the perfect and every paradigm for the cow stem for the imperfect. And I want you to do that with five or six different uh, uh, verbs. It's a good exercise, but I'm not asking you to do that. What I am asking you to do is this. I want you to do the transliteration. I want you to do pronunciation. And then I want you to do the translation every time. Somebody said, did you give any homework? <laughs> yes. I'm going to say one more time. This is your homework. This is it. I want you to do the transliteration. Forgive me if some of you feel like I'm insulting you. I don't mean to be. I just got to make sure that I am getting you know, the the message across because sometimes I get emails and I get text messages and I'm like, you know, well, let, let me watch it myself and hear what I said because I, I really do remember saying this. And so I'm going to say it enough so that I can remember that I said it so I don't have to watch the YouTube. Okay, so it's, it's, it's transliteration, it's pronunciation, and it is translation. And so um, what I want to emphasize to you then is try to build some speed. So go with your syllables. Va yek ra el o him la or yom. So it's very hard to break yom out into um, too many individual syllables, right? So it's it's because it's it's yod. Uh, Holam Vav, right? Mm -hmm. Mim, right? Right. So it's just, it's a word that has, um, in this instance, as we're looking at it right now, uh, from a perspective of consonant, vowel consonant, it's just a consonant, vowel consonant, right? But actually, it would probably be in ancient times a three letter word, Yod, uh, Wav. Which was originally a vowel, and and the mem. So yom. Then break this one out. Ve, la, choshet. So what we have is we have the conjunctive, right? Vav, right? Did we have the participle, la, which includes within it the uh, uh, the definite article, the, huh? And to the and to the darkness. So. So, so it's like the Lord, and, and to the darkness, um, he called. You wouldn't just say, and to the darkness called, because if you do that, you're not recognizing that that is a third masculine singular, and it contains more than just the verb. It contains within the verb the pronoun, right? And he called. Okay, so... You, you're, you're, you would be messing up bad in your translation if you just said, and to the darkness called night. That's weird. That's weird. It's like poetry. Okay? So you have to go, and to the darkness he called. Okay? And to the darkness he called night. Okay? Or, and he called the darkness night. I mean, I think it's, it's very mystical. You know, and you can really get into some wild, uh, mis you know, mystic ideas of saying, and to, and to the darkness he called night. You know, but it's too, and he called the darkness <laughs> night. Okay, I hope you're getting this. 
because there, you know, we could be get we could get spooky with this. That's not. <laughs> and to the darkness, he called night. So we didn't have to repeat Elohim, right? Right. Because the Elohim, God, is the one doing this. We already got. We are hopefully we already understand that very clearly in the way that our our Hebrew is going here. And to the darkness, he called night, and and it was the evening. So let's look at that once again. You have come across Vayahi now so many times that you should almost say it in your dreams. Vayahi. You've got Vayahi. And somebody said, well, it's a pocket form of the Cal Perfect uh, paradigm. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to say, wait a minute, it is the, it is the uh, third person masculine uh, singular and um, let's look at it. Let's go back up here and let's look at it here. So, try to use some reference. We can back up here, okay? But Yomer Elohim Yahi, right? That's the first time that you encountered it, right? And there, Yahi is the perfect form. It looks like the imperfect form, doesn't it? Yahi. Mm -hmm. Huh? And 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 God said, like be. Yahi, right? Yeah. And it looks because you've got that it's got that yod there, but what's underneath the yod? Shwa. 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 And that's our first clue that this is this is this is not the Lord saying, and God said it was light. We're not gonna get it it was light until we see the Bob conversive. And it's the Bob conversive that's changing it that's changing the uh, it's change. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I'm. I'm. I'm getting. I'm getting distracted. And God said, "Light be." So when we're looking at this, and and and, and light was. So we're looking at yod hey uh, the yod hey yod being the imperfect form because uh, I said it wrong. I'm sorry. Okay. And then we see the bob conversive making it the perfect form. So here is an example. Forgive me. Where you have a schwa under it, and it is actually this form. It's not a herrick. So it is an imperfect form right here. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry. It's just that you drop the hay at the end. So it's, it's, that's where it's apocopated, or that's where one of the consonants are left off. So my bad. Okay, and, and God said, uh, light be. So what is that? If it's it, light be. Or come into existence, something that's coming. What is that? It's, it's future. Imperfect. Future is imperfect. Okay, um, and then a perfect is past tense. Right. So you have the imperfect form here, and it is third person masculine singular, right? Because so you come down here, and you look at once again. Here we are with that same form. It's the imperfect form with a sere. Instead of a, instead of the classic herrick, mm -hmm. and the vob changes it so that it goes from being future to past tense, and the evening and and it and it was the evening, and it was the morning. So it's vayihi erev vayihi. Okay, say vayihi, vayihi. So once again, it's the vob conversive with an imperfect third person masculine singular. How many times do we encounter that? Through here. Let's see how many times we encounter it. I guess we only first encounter it in verse 3. Yeah. yeah. And then we don't encounter it again until right here. In verse 5. Well, we also, we had it, we had it, oh yeah. We had it right here in verse 2. So we had the Haaretz Hayata. So let's look at that. And we see that um, you go over, and I've, I know I've already gone through this, but you go over to the table, and what's going to give you the clue is at the very end, the gamets and the hay. You go over here, the gamets and the hay, and it's third person feminine singular. Mm -hmm. See that? Hayata, see that? Yep. Third person feminine singular, right? <clears throat> Hayata, see that? So I said that all of our verbs. And so, once again, I 
done messed up. I said, I made a mistake. I said, all of our verbs was in the cow masculine simple form except for the one uh, PL and, and that we encountered in the Merakefet. And that's not true. We do have a perfect third person feminine, feminine singular. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get you warmed up. I should be warmed up, and you can see I'm still a little icy, <laughs> to being able to look at all the verbs and parse the verbs, because that's the hardest part of Hebrew, is parsing the verbs. Recognizing a, uh, a noun that's uh, feminine or um, masculine or, well, especially singular or plural, that's easy. That's just vocabulary. The difficult part is parsing verbs and um, especially when you have seven stem forms and fortunately only uh, uh, one of them is most common where you have the majority is the, the call and then you have the nifil the pl which is you know also relatively common and then you've got things like the pulal hitfel hitfel those are uh, uh, less common and probably easier to identify um, and, and we'll get into that later. We'll get into that second year. Get into that. And, and, and it'll make, uh, by that time, it, it'll be a little bit more comfortable to you. I really want you to work at this. Um, I really want you to work at identifying these kinds of forms. Okay? And having this chart right by you, just with a simple to be. Okay? You're going to rely on this chart, which primarily you will see that with the cow perfect, we're pretty much just looking at a suffix. See that? It's just going to change it based on a suffix, just like you see here at Hayata. So you're maybe it might be a little bit easier, the cow perfect, to recognize the verb form because you're just changing, just putting a suffix on the end. Mm -hmm. With the imperfect, you're going to have a prefix and a suffix. That should stand out to you. I think that that's the biggest point I want to make to you in terms of identifying um, the difference between the cow perfect and the cow imperfect right now is just remember that the cow perfect has a suffix only added to the verb form, simple verb form. The cow imperfect has both a suffix, okay, and a prefix, okay? And so what you get really, what you what you get once again is that the majority of the prefixes for the cow imperfect is the tet with a dogish. Should be like a neon flashing light to you. Okay? Um, one of the things is you just begin to get familiar with all of the. And here's one thing to do get familiar with all of the verbs, most common verbs, that begin with tet. It's not going to be hard. I think the vocabulary for that is going to be 30, around 30 words. You become familiar with every tet word. It might be less than that. I'm talking about the most frequently used. I'm not some, this is talking about something that's used once or two times. I'm talking about most frequently used tet words in the Hebrew language. And that's going to make it even more simpler. But by and large, you're going to be able to see almost in every case you're going to be able to recognize that it's an imperfect uh, either by a singular yod at the beginning of that somewhat familiar <laughs> uh, ver uh, three consonant or three letter verb or it's going to have a tet in front of it. That's about the easiest thing I could say. And then you'll see that whether it's the third masculine singular, singular or third masculine plural, it's going to start with that yod. And then all you've got to do is recognize the shurik at the end of it. See the shurik? Yeah. All, all you got to do is recognize the shurik at the end of it. So I want you to just kind of get familiar with it. Somebody said, well, how do I get familiar with it? 
write it over and again. At least, you know, I think when I first did it, you just like maybe 10 times. Just write it until, just write it over and over again, copy it until you can pretty much do it without having to look at the table. Maybe you have to peek at the table every once in a while. But if you kept doing it, if you did it like every day for the rest of this quarter or did it once a week for the rest of this quarter, you'd pretty much have it for life until you get to be 60. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You pretty much have it. It's like my brain is, I mean, I'm, they're talking about this new uh, 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 supplement that you can take that they found the uh, important ingredient in jellyfish. I'm like thinking, jellyfish all the time. Who would have ever thought that? I mean, that you could basically go eat some jellyfish and be smarter when you get older and retain information. But at this point in time, I promise you, I'm looking at something for, for help because it seems like I'm having to relearn a lot of things. Fortunately, you get it, and then all you got to do is refresh yourself. And for me, what I need to do... <laughs> is I need to start refreshing myself <laughs> in several different ways before I come and teach Hebrew, okay? Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a better job at that, uh, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so just looking back through here, I want to go back through here one more time. Just look at all the verbs real quickly, and then I'm going to, we're going to, even if it's a little bit, cutting the class a little bit short, we're going to go ahead and stop. Because I know that some people are getting overwhelmed, and other people are basically, you're twiddling your thumbs, staring off at the ceiling, going, well, you know what, I got this. When it, come on, let's go. But we're going to make it to where that um, everybody can keep up. Somebody recently um, emailed me and said, would you please dumb it down? I don't, I promise you. Um, <laughs> that's an interesting phrase to use. <laughs> I'm, doing this, I'm doing this in the most... Uh, you know, slow and simplified manner that I can think of. Dumbing down is not my department. <laughs> okay, so, uh, para, once again, the cow perfect, third masculine singular. I want you to be able to go, I want you to be able to do that. And for most of these, you should be able to do it without thinking because it's a simple form. It's a form that it's going, you're going to memorize it. If you've got flashcards, it would be the form that you would memorize all these verbs in. It is always this simple form, Cal Perfect, third person masculine singular. Okay, we go on down the list here. Et hashamayim et ha'aretz. Okay, no more verbs. Ha'aretz, hayata. We've talked about that. That's our only third person ma uh, feminine singular Perfect. And we should always go, we should kind of keep a, a rhythm here. So you're saying it at the same time, same way every time. So it's like, and I'll remember this as I'm going along. We're learning together. Okay. So perfect. It's perfect. Third person masculine singular. So you'd always say it that way. Perfect. Third person masculine singular. Okay. Not this though. This is perfect. Third person feminine singular. And remember... That gamut's hey at the end of the verb is a giveaway. It's it just it it really you know girlifies this thing. It <laughs> feminizes it. That's the girly thing. That's the little you know that's the little the gamets. It's the little bow in the back of the head, okay? <laughs> and the hey there, okay? To hu vavahu vechoshech al panei to home veruach elohim merachefet. And then we have our only difficult verb form is a pl. And I'm going to talk about the PLs because we're going to run into some more PLs here in Chapter 1. We'll talk about them later um, so that you can have... This is, a, this is a more difficult one to identify, but we'll talk about them later so you can identify it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm going to talk about the more common form of the PL when we introduce it and come back and look at this this little monster. Merachefet al pene hamayim. <laughs> and then that what what do you know about what do you know about um, the yod herek mim at the end of uh, hamayim, especially the mim at the end of the word. What does that really? What do you relate that to? Elohim, right? Elohim. It has a familiarity, right? And it kind of helps you realize well, that's plural. Yeah. It's waters, okay? Um, just and so once again, those are those are pretty easy. Uh, your, your masculine plural is basically always going to be that uh, same form that you see with one of the first words that you learned. Elohim. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Vayomer Elohim, Yahi, there's our verb form. What is it? It's, uh, once again, it is an imperfect, a cal imperfect third person masculine singular, um, and the hay is dropped. Okay? And I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, that that's the ones that they referred to, apocopated. And just, you lost the letter at the end. Um, yahi or, Vayahi or. And then, of course, same form, third person, is the imperfect third person masculine singular, but with a Bob conversive, which changes it from an imperfect to a perfect. Right? Everybody got that? Yep. If you got any questions, text me. The only problem is <laughs> my phone <laughs> is about uh, a half a mile away, not quite that far. I forgot it again. I'm sorry. Somebody's got to help. I'm going to blame it on Michaela. Uh, she got me distracted, and I'm not going to, you know. But nonetheless, no, it was not her fault. I, I am actually need to repent for lying. And actually, the reality of it is, is you're not even supposed to say things in jest. Somebody said, "I'm just kidding." Would you please in? Would you please strike out the word "kidding" and and insert the word "jesting"? Because then it might help you recognize that that you really shouldn't be doing that. Uh, just refer to that in, in the Bible. So, um, the dictionary of life, by the way. Okay? So, where was I at? Verse 4. So, verse 4, Bayar, what are we looking at? We're looking at a verb. And what kind of verb are we looking at? We're definitely looking at that yod. That yod is staring at us. In fact, the yod with a dogish in it actually looks like an eye. So, it is staring at us and it's one eye in us, right? It's giving us the fish eye. So, that is definitely an imperfect third person masculine singular. And the actually, it is from the Hebrew uh, cal, uh, form um, ra'a. And so we're missing a consonant, okay? But we're going to forgive it for right now. You're going to see that with the imperfect in this form. Um, but with the Bob and Bob conversive there, it's changed from an imperfect to a perfect. It's changed from a future tense to a past tense. And so here we got, and, and, and God saw. Vayar from Ra'a. Vay, so, Vayar Elohim, and God saw. He saw what? He saw the light, and it was good. Beautiful. Somebody, many people have asked questions about verse 3 and said, What's going on here? Because there's no sun, moon, stars shining. God's the light thereof. God says light and light exists. God's light. Who who made who made the sun to shine in the first place? So I said, oh, well, the sun gives light because there's some nuclear fusion reaction going on. You don't even know what they're talking about. You don't even know what that is. Okay, yeah, we got some scientific terms and explanations about it. And yes, we can show that to a certain degree chemically. But light doesn't have to exist because there is a nuclear reactor, so to speak, as is in the sun creating photons. God can God makes stuff out of nothing. He stepped in and he said light be and there was light. And he divided light from the darkness. And you could say, well we could talk about that just on a spiritual level, especially when we start comparing it next year to to Greek in in, in uh, John chapter one and it's definitely certain. There is no question about it. And because we'll go back when we're doing Greek next year and we're looking at uh, the Gospel of John chapter 1 and we're looking at these same exact terms as it were we're going to come back to Genesis chapter 1 and we're going to look at it in Greek because of the Septuagint is, is the Old Testament in Greek and we're going to see some amazing little parallels about Christ Jesus who is the light that the, the light came and the darkness could not stop it here God is dividing between the light and the darkness. Now the light's going to come and it's going to put out the darkness. Ooh. So, lots of things to think about there. I could really start I could really start talking, preaching, ministering, flowing in the Holy Ghost right now, but I have actually experienced times where I was just teaching Hebrew like this and people started falling out uh, under the anointing. And I'm like, guys, would you please pull yourself together? I was in another ministry doing it, and it was it just turned in one gigantic roar. 
and uh, just trying to explain a simple verb form. But uh, normally we don't want that to happen at this moment in time. We'd like to have your faculties that would allow you to remember this. But at any time, feel free to go away over to heaven because it's far better. Okay, so we've got we've dealt with all of these um, forms by Yar. We just dealt with that Elohim et Haor Kitov. Here is a adjective in the English language, good, but it appears to us in the Hebrew language. It's an it it it, it means good, but it, it it presents itself to us in a unique way. It presents us itself to us as a perfect third person masculine singular. Tov. And we'll learn more about that and what we can do with that later in the future. And then Vayavdel, what are we looking at, at in terms of Vayavdel? Vayavdel is a verb. What kind of a verb? And it comes from the and the three letter consonant, Vadel. And usually you can have a consonant, and let me just say this. You have a three-letter consonant. That's all you have there is like vav, dalit, dalit with a dogish, right? Which really, um, it's a begat the kefit, so you don't double it, right? Because it's a dalit, begat the kefit, right? So it's it's a it's a, a dalit with a dogish, and it's a dogish line. Doesn't need to be doubled. So it's it's bet dalit lamet, and then if you wanted to know what vowels should be or should be under it. It's usually going to just be a hey, gametz pata. You'd be fine with that. Or gametz gametz. So it's always going to have that A sound, badal. Rarely are you going to find a verb in the Cal perfect form, you know, as it presents itself in the way that you're learning it without, you know, uh, the, the two A sounds underneath it, the, the gametz or the pata sound. And so, um, so that's why I could easily say, instead of just saying, uh, Beit Dalit Lamet is the is the root. We could say in parsing this verb, it's Badal, and we know because once again there's that eye staring at us. It's giving us the old one eye right there. So what is it? It's an imperfect third person masculine singular. Okay, okay, we got that down. But remember, we've got the Bob conversive in front of it. It's going to change it over to the perfect. Ask yourself, why must we do it that way? <laughs> okay? Ask yourself, why must we do it that way? That's the way it is. Okay? So just leave it there for now, and let's try to make sense out of it later. I just want you to be going there, and I want you to do exactly what I just did. I just parsed that verb. Right? Mm -hmm. I went in there, identified what it was, what's the root? That's the first thing you do. What's the root? It's the first thing you ask yourself. What verb is this? What's the three consonant root? So I said, it's the Beit, the Dalit, Lamed. Got that. Mm -hmm. And you could just say Beit, Dalit, Beit, Dalit, Lamed, and you could leave it there if you wanted to. But I said, oh, you could also just go ahead and put the A sounds under there like Gametz, Pata, and say Badal. Badal is your root. Now what, what else do I know about this? And then I work my way back out. Oh, there's that Yod that mm -hmm. signifies the... Um, it signifies the imperfect form, third person masculine singular. It's the first form that you always encounter. It's the first form that you want to memorize. Pretty easy. And then you look, ah, there's the vowel conversive. I just changed it from an imperfect to a perfect. Now I have a completely parsed verb. That's parsing verbs in Hebrew. That's it. You're going to learn to do that. So that's the biggest thing I wanted to say in this lesson today. I wanted to just really get you to thinking on a level of now I am parsing verbs. I'm going in, I'm identifying every verb that I'm reading to start off with. I'm going to get at their roots. Those adjectives and those nouns, I'm going to ultimately put them in my vocabulary list and I'm just going to memorize them. I'm going to memorize the three consonant uh, root of my verbs so that as I go on I can always parse them. So once again, we've got a couple of new words that we're adding to our vocabulary for verse 5. Um, and, and so, and I think the biggest one here is kara. I think that's the biggest one. Kara is a new word, right? It's a very important word. It's a very frequent word 
used over and again to proclaim and call. So this is the Bible is a as a bunch of sermons preached by a bunch of prophets. So they're going to be proclaiming and calling all the time. So Karah is a word that you are going to find over and over again. You can learn how to utilize it in your everyday speech. Well, you can take these things and just learn how to utilize them in everyday biblical language, which there isn't any. You could just be you and the people that are taking biblical Hebrew with you. But there is ways to do that. Okay? Um, and so what would be cool to do is to take Karah and go ahead and go through the whole paradigm and look at what Karah would be through the paradigm. Put it, make, her, make Karah, for example, a, a third feminine singular. Make Karah um, a, a second masculine singular. Go through the whole entire paradigm exercise. Just begin to work with it. You might, you're not going to get the vowels right to start with, but that's okay. You'll begin to recognize the suffixes, and you'll recognize the suffix and the prefix, and it help get you familiar. Later on, we'll learn the rules of what you do with the vowels, whether based upon whether it's, you know, um, whether it's a strong consonant, strong vowel, or weak consonant, weak vowel, strong, um, strong verb or a weak verb. Put it that way. So, um, yeah, so then we have it twice, we have it here as an imperfect, right? So let's parse it. It is a, the, 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 the root is kara and um, kofresh aleph, and there is the yod uh, that makes it an imperfect, and it's a bob conversive, so it is now a, um, in a perfect form, third person masculine singular, and he called is how you translate that. I just parsed it and translated it. Okay? And then we come over here and now we see kara in the perfect form, third person masculine singular. Okay? So here it is. And he called and God called the light day and the darkness. He called. So it's perfect. You know, it's past tense, but it's basically, it's a little bit different from past tense and future tense. In other language, it's a it's a past tense from a perspective of looking outside of something, an event that is happening. Could be happening right there. Okay? Could actually be happening in the future. That's a real interesting one, especially Biblical Hebrew, where the Lord calls those things which are not as though they were. Where he from his perspective is saying something that exists that doesn't even exist yet. And we'll see that. We're gonna encounter we'll encounter those. Those are really cool. Um, especially um, Especially when we get to, uh, what is it, starting somewhere around um, Genesis 12, Genesis 14, something like that. You'll see. That's, that's going to be later on. Because we're going to keep working our way through Genesis. Later on, you guys are going to get so good, we'll go through a, a whole book of, of the Bible in a quarter. And um, then we'll keep doing that for the rest of your life. Until we get really, really good at it. And then you'll know where all the verbs are, wherever hisphil is, wherever pl is. And you just you'll you'll have it down. You'll be better at it than I am. And so I think that I think that pretty much does it in terms of new verbs. The only other new um, nouns that you have here, I think, then is the evening and the morning, right? That's it, isn't it? No, you've got day and night, right? Day and night and evening and morning. That's right. You have day and night and evening and morning and call. That's your four day and night, evening and morning and call. Those are your four new words. Is that correct? Five new words. Five new words. Okay, very good. Um, any burning questions in here saying is that nobody can text me? Anybody in here, you can go ahead and text Mike. Mike's here. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. Question? Um, and just for an example, can you take Kora and um, put it into second person masculine singular in perfect form? Yeah, second person uh, masculine uh, singular. Just so that I can have an idea. Okay, of how a perfect to do form. That. Let's go perfect form, second person masculine singular. What I want you just to do this is I want you to focus on the uh, I want you to focus on the final uh, suffix there. Right. So in, in just a, in a real simple kind of a way, 
you would just do this. I'm going to show you. In a real simple kind of way, you would do this, even though it's not right. Okay? You would do that. Okay. Okay? And, um, of course, with the dogish and the uh, vomits. Okay? Pretty sure it probably does something like this. Drop the Aleph. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'd have to go back and remember, but I don't. Don't worry about that right now. I don't. I, I don't. I'm missing something there. It might be a yod included. Um, it's been a while since I've done it, but that's really all I want you to do for now. Just, just kind of get familiar with it by doing something real simple that you do not need to refer to a reference guide on it, and so. Uh, let's do, we we'll just, we could just go ahead and do, um, let's do the third person common plural, okay? That one I'm pretty sure would be this. Oh man, that doesn't look right. No, just, so just do it like that. And, um, don't worry about the vials. Okay. Just, I, all I want you to do is make yourself familiar with the ending. So just look at first person common common plural and it would be this. Okay. Then basically do the same thing with the imperfect. Just put it, and, and do, just do it like you're going to parse it, mm -hmm. okay? And then go ahead and add this. What is that? The yod. Oh, okay. To make it the <laughs> imperfect. Go ahead and add that. Got That's it. the yod. And go ahead, you can go ahead and add the yod with the yod or the herrick, but or sere, doesn't matter. I think you should only add it with a herrick, though. Um... And so, so you just go down through the list. It just is going to it's going to help you really get familiar with the fact that when you have an imperfect, really you're either going to see the yod, and this is really simple. It's almost gonna, it's just going to be that almost every time as you as you go through this type of an exercise. Mm -hmm. Except for now, you're going to start adding a suffix like in the second uh, in the uh, second feminine singular. Okay, you're going to have. And is it, is it, what is it, the yod? Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about the vowels for right now. For right now. I'm going to have to refresh myself on the vowels. Okay, I mean, I can look at it and know what it is usually. <laughs> um, but um, the rules on the vowels, I couldn't, just, I couldn't articulate them right now. I'm trying to imagine what some of these are. Pretty much those those olives, the olive is going to disappear, and it's going to be replaced. I'm pretty sure. We'll just we'll go through it next time. As soon as you brought it up, you see, as you brought it up and I messed it up, <laughs> we'll go through it. But just do that for now. Okay. Just do a real simple form. Okay. One more question. One more question. The homework from last week, you wanted us to translate a few words. Yes. Are you going to give us the correct translation? Uh, absolutely. Was, which which ones did I want you to translate? It was, it was bara Elohim. It it wasn't in the first five verses. Oh. Um, it was bara Elohim et ha Adam. Bara Elohim et ha Adam is God created Adam. Okay. Yeah, or God created man. And so is the ha Adam? Is that normally like a, a the at the beginning? The of ha Adam is when you look at that. Did I do it right? Yes. Okay. When you look at that, this is always your definite article. Okay. The. When you have a participle in front, it's always going to be like the la. It's going to have both the whatever it is. If it's the ba in, to, in the mm -hmm. or la is to the or towards the. Mm -hmm. So it's going to include the participle and right. the definite article. Okay. So in that particular instance, um, um, Bara Elohim et Ha'adam, et being 
the direct object, right. saying, here's a direct object, this is what this is about. Right. Every time you see it, okay? And and it's the Adam. So when you see Ha Adam, you're like, oh, we're referring to the man. Right. Okay? And there's what, three or four different words for man yes. in the Hebrew language. Um, sometimes it, there's a real reflection. My, my spirit would not always tr strive with the man. Well, God's right there in the midst of talking, you know, about the situation with flood and getting ready to address Noah. So that really does cause us to go back to Adam mm -hmm. and to think that, wait a minute, Adam somehow is a part of what God is addressing here. But because, it, but because he is but flesh, the number of his days should be 120 years. Mm -hmm. So that really is, you know, loosely people want to translate it mankind, but there's other words for that. It just harkens back to here God created Adam and, and purposed for him to do something. Adam rebelled against that. And now he's lived for how many years? 930 years. And the Lord's dealing with him. And we don't hear anything about him. And so we, but we assume God is dealing with him. We know God is dealing with him because we know God is working with him. And so then when we see that theologically, we go from a, looking at it from the language point of view, we're hearing, we're hearing Adam. Yeah. And so I, I, my sense is that when the when the Lord utilizes ha Adam, mm -hmm. He's always bringing our attention to the person Adam, okay. even though the context is maybe mankind, because He wouldn't be talking about a man singular, right. but that's what it sounds like in Genesis chapter six. He's talking about a man singular man, and so we should think that. When it comes down like that in a translation, this looks like a singular man, the person Adam. What other Adams do we know up to this point? We don't know of any other Adams up to this point. Only one's named in the Bible. Those are the kinds of things that you begin to get out of the scripture when you're reading Hebrew that you won't get anywhere else. It's not going to be English or other words for mankind, which is prop, is used many, many times. Ish is a one for man and, and used many, many times. But the Lord doesn't say Ha'ish. I am not. He doesn't say my spirit will not always strive with a man. Ha'ish. He says Ha'adam. And we, whether it's in Genesis or if it's in Jeremiah, it's always unique in a situation in which He addresses the issue of sin or iniquity or judgment. It's coming back to Adam, and we're right here in Genesis chapter six. We really truly are addressing the issue of judgment, right. and so that's falling on Adam's head. Okay, I love all of you guys. I'll try to get my phone with me next time.